Welcome to the Foul Play YouTube channel. Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to this Foul Play review. Um, my name is Dr. Silkman and welcome beautiful people from wherever you're listening. Thank you very much for uh, coming to our channel. Uh, this is a bit of a special presentation. Um, and uh, before we commence our uh, presentation, uh, we just hope that everyone is doing well, uh, considering that we've got a pandemic going on, and um, we hope that your family is safe. And uh, joining me today on our uh, special podcast, uh, we have Bibi, Thank you very much. Jack61, we have Neverly, we have Susan, we have Zoe, and we have Sammy. Uh, and Sammy and Zoe, I believe, will be uh, checking the chat. And so if you have any questions, uh, look, feel free to write them down and we'll, we'll try our very best to answer them. Uh, just to remind all of our listeners, uh, first of all, thank you so much for subscribing to our channel. We have 949 subscribers, and that's really, really awesome. We're very thankful for that. Um, just to let you know, guys, that remember, uh, this weekend there is the Mammothon, and some of the uh, some of us from Foul Play will be <laughs> on Mammothon, and that'll be awesome. And also, just to let you know that this week, uh, because of the Mammothon, there'll be no coffee. So that will be the week after. All right, guys. So, look, we'll make a start and welcome to the presentation. So let's have a look at slide number one. So essentially, guys, what we're going to be doing here, um, there's a new series on Netflix and it's called The Innocence Files. Uh, and uh, what we're going to be doing uh, in today's podcast, we're going to be doing a review of episodes one to three. So we'll be revealing a lot of uh, uh, spoiler plots here. So if you don't want to know, uh, probably best to close uh, your, e your eyes and uh, cover your ears. But what we're going to do is we're going to review episodes one to three. Uh, and this is a show, a new show uh, on Netflix. And it really has caught all of our attention for its uh, content. And really, guys, what this is about, the first three episodes, is on bite mark analysis. And we're going to meet um, three guys that spent a long time in prison uh, as a result of bite mark analysis. We're going to be talking about uh, Levon Brooks, uh, Kennedy Brewer, and Keith Harwood. Uh, and also we're going to meet... Um, an infamous dentist, um, actually he's a forensic odontologist by the, by the name of Dr. Michael West. Uh, and i tell you what, uh, all you need to do is to speak to Zoe. She'll tell you all about him. We never thought that we we're going to meet anyone as sinister uh, as um, uh, Kratz. But Lord above us, um, we have found that person. So guys, let's have a look at slide number two. So basically what the episodes are about, they're about the work uh, done by Peter Newfield and, and Barry Sheck. Uh, and both of these guys are co-founders of the Innocence Project. And you've heard their names before, and you've also heard the Innocence Project before because uh, one of their clients uh, was Stephen Avery, uh, who, uh, and they got him out of prison. Eventually, he was exonerated for the uh, Penny Bernstein case. Well, the sad thing is, and guys, you probably are fully aware, is that the Innocent Project, and you can see here, every year receives thousands of letters from both men and women who have been placed in prison, and they believe they have been placed in prison wrongfully, wrongfully convicted. Uh, and it drew the attention of both Peter and Barry uh, regarding some cases um, that occurred in Mississippi, especially in Mississippi, and they all involve bite mark analysis. So guys, let's have a look at slide number three. And bite mark analysis really uh, came into provenance uh, with the 10 Bundy case. 
uh, and there was a forensic ontologist by the name of Dr. Richard Soveron, uh, and he testified during the Ted Bundy uh, trial. And what he did was he looked at bite mark analysis. And essentially, uh, allegedly, Ted Bundy had bitten uh, one of his victims. And they were able to get or a mold, cast a mold of Ted Bundy's teeth. Um, and it matched perfectly to the bite marks on one of his victims. And you can see here on the top right hand corner, um, one of the subjects is actually being bitten by the very uh, teeth impressions of Ted Bundy. Well, because Tim Bundy had very unique teeth, um, it was a 100% match uh, uh, to the bite mark on the victim, and he was uh, convicted, uh, sentenced to death, uh, mainly based on the bite mark um, testimony. And so this now became very popular, and a lot of uh, juries, uh, so a lot of judges, attorneys, now wanted to use bite mark uh, analysis for a lot of forensic cases. So guys, let's turn to slide number four. Uh, this very, very sad case occurred in Noxaby County in Mississippi, and it occurred on September the 15th, 1990, and it involved the um, brutal uh, rape and murder of a young girl by the name of Courtney Smith, who was three years old at the time. Uh, and uh, she was in bed um, with her sister and I think with her brother, and she was snatched in the middle of a night by someone, and these horrendous crimes were committed on this poor little girl. Uh, the uh, chief investigator in the case was Ernest, and we'll meet Ernest uh, in several of the cases um, that we'll be discussing. So let's have a look at slide number five. So, um, okay. So, a big search party went out to see if they could find Courtney. And unfortunately, they found Courtney's body uh, floating in a shallow uh, riverbed on September the 17th, 1990. And the forensic pathologist who performed the autopsy on Courtney was uh, Dr. Stephen Hain, and he had a lot of experience uh, as a forensic pathologist. What the forensic pathologist uh, noted uh, on the body of Courtney were what appeared to be bite marks uh, around the wrist. Uh, this is where uh, Dr. Michael West, who's a forensic ontologist, comes into the picture. Now, just one thing about Dr. West. He has a massive amount of experience. He's got many, many qualifications, uh, many university degrees, um, and he's attended many, many autopsies, and he's done a whole variety of jobs, uh, predominantly in Mississippi. So he's well credentialed. So let's have a look at slide at number six. And essentially what this study is, uh, what bite mark analysis is, is they match up uh, teeth impressions on the body of the victim and they can either rule a person in or out as having caused the bite mark on the victim. Now remember this type of uh, forensic um, analysis was relatively new. So they questioned uh, the mother and found out uh, potential suspects, those that knew uh, the little girl, hung around the family etc etc and eventually, they were able to get 12 suspects. Uh, and what Dr. Michael West did was uh, a dental impression of all 12 suspects. Well, at the same time, um, Courtney's little sister, uh, Ashley Smith, who was five years old at the time, was being questioned uh, by a guy called Uncle Bunky. Uh, and he sort of worked with the police and he was able to question Ashley about what she saw and heard that night. Because remember, Ashley was sleeping right next, right next to her sister who got snatched from her, the bed. So let's have a look at slide number seven. They also spoke with the mother 
and uh, they asked the mother, look, do you know anyone? When they, when they questioned um, uh, Ashley, uh, she kept on mentioning about an earring and about a quarter. So they also questioned um, the mother. And they said, look, do you know anyone that's got an earring that you know? Uh, and uh, she said, yes, I know a guy by the name of Levon Brooks. And as you can see here on the right-hand side, they were sort of on and off friends um, and they were going out, uh, you know, on and off. So let's have a look at slide number eight. Well, uh, a, a list of suspects were drawn up and uh, the trial came uh, and uh, Levon James was picked out uh, in the trial uh, by the five-year-old um, girl. And so what Dr. Michael West did, he did a tooth impression of um, uh, Levon Brooks and Levon Brooks got arrested. And if we have a look at uh, slide number nine, the prosecuting DA is Forrest Allgood. Uh, and uh, apparently his um, uh, prosecution of uh, Levon Brooks was very, very savage. And he said, and I quote, but the man who did this left his mark. And I quote, that man who left those teeth marks is Levon Brooks. So this is the prosecuting uh, DA. So let's have a look at slide number 10. So essentially what um, Dr. Michael West did was they take um, a teeth impression of a potential suspect. They make a model, a three-dimensional model, and what they do is they try and match the uh, teeth with the marks on the body. And what Dr. Michael West testified in court, and I quote, were highly consistent with the <coughs> flaws and patterns that I found on the backside of Levon's teeth. So this was now very, very powerful evidence that somehow Levon Brooks, who kept on saying he was innocent, uh, Dr. Michael West is saying, you bit this girl. And that, of course, was uh, Courtney Smith, three-year-old Courtney Smith, um, who was killed. So this was very, very powerful uh, evidence in a court of law. Now, if we have a look at slide number 11, Dr. Michael West wrote a report, and I quote, the dental structures of one Levon Brooks did indeed and without doubt inflict the bite mark found on the body of Courtney Smith. Now, as you can see here, if someone says indeed and without doubt, they're pretty serious and they're pretty convinced that um, it was Levon Brooks who bit the victim, Courtney Smith. And of course, this was very, very powerful evidence in a court of law. Well, if we have a look at slide 12. Now, remember, we're talking about the testimony of a five-year-old girl, Ashley, and the analysis, the bite mark analysis of Dr. West. Well, Levon Brooks got life in prison for kidnapping, rape, and murder. And he kept on saying, I'm innocent. I have not committed any crime. But he was sent into prison for life. So, guys, let's have a look at slide number 13. So, lo and behold, while um, Levon, Levon Brooks is in prison, in May 1992, the unthinkable happens. Another child, another three-year-old child, goes missing from her house. Now, remember, Levon Brooks is already in prison. So clearly, whoever committed this crime could not have been Levon Brooks. He was sitting in prison. The young girl that got um, abducted from her house uh, was Christine Jackson. Uh, this was in the same type of neighborhood area. So we have another three-year-old child who was abducted from her house. And unfortunately, she was also sexually molested uh, and killed and thrown in the river. So 
when the forensic pathologist, um, if we have a look at slide number 14, when the forensic pathologist uh, examined her body, Christine Jackson's body, he also uh, found what appeared to be bite marks. Uh, and of course, the media went into a frenzy because her attack was described as a vicious sexual attack, strangulation, and found floating in a creek. Now, clearly, this could not have been Lavon Brooks, but <coughs> the nature of the crime, um, how both uh, girls were sort of living in the uh, same neighborhood, they both were three years old, uh, the same horrible things happened to both girls, uh, and, you know, one person was put in prison for life, it meant that somebody else had committed this other attack on Christine Jackson. So let's have a look at slide number 15. Well, of course, what happened was they rounded up potential suspects. And it just so happened that they got Kennedy Brewer. And Kennedy Brewer, he was like uh, the boyfriend of, um, the, uh, of the mother. And they did teeth impressions as well of Kennedy Brewer. Kennedy Brewer kept on saying, look, I'm innocent. I haven't committed any crime. You know, what's going on here? Well, enter in Dr. West again. And what Dr. West did again, he compared the um, dental model of, of Kennedy Brewer with the bite marks on the victim uh, of Christine Jackson. And lo and behold, he writes his report, and I quote, the bite marks found on the body of Christina Jackson were indeed and without doubt inflected by Kennedy Brewer. And so, again, that's exactly what he wrote for Levon Brooks. And um, this, again, was very devastating. And uh, Kennedy Brewer kept on saying, look, I'm not guilty. I haven't committed any crime. And he did say, I quote, they didn't look no further than me. And guys, if you've been following our Ma'am Ma 1 and Ma'am 2 podcast, we have heard this so, so many times. It's just unbelievable. So, guys, let's have a look at slide number 16. Now, what um, Dr. West did, um, he did a video, a private video, um, showing um, how the potential bite marks were done on the body of Christine Jackson. Uh, and um, you can see from the, the shots, well, the teeth mark, the teeth marks really did not align up very properly at all. And if you have a look at the uh, jaw, uh, the um, teeth, he had to roll them at unbelievable angles in order to get a sort of a fit on the body. Now, apparently, my understanding is, is that this particular video uh, was not shown um, to the jury because, I quote, it was too macabre. <laughs> which is rather amazing. So that's the type of analysis that Dr. West did. He sort of had to roll the teeth in order to get a sort of a match. But based on his um, expert testimony, uh, Kennedy Brewer was going to be in serious trouble. So if we have a look at uh, slide 17, and um, you can see here that Dr. West presents the uh, dental imprints uh, and he gives his testimony, uh, and he's very forthright uh, in what he's saying, in that Kennedy Brewer definitely bit this girl. Well, that's very, very powerful forensic evidence um, against uh, Kennedy Brewer. And it's interesting that we have the same prosecuting DA, um, and he said, oh, look, you know, clearly we've got a copycat. So instead of thinking, hmm, Maybe there's something wrong with the Levon Brooks case. He said, no, 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 it must be a copycat. Somebody else has committed this crime. So, guys, if we have a look at slide 18, and what we'll do after slide 18, we'll stop and we'll open it up to the panel. So if we have a look at slide 18, well, Brewer got sentenced to death. Right? He got sentenced to death. He got placed on death row. 
And remember, guys, there were no witnesses. Uh, this was all based on bike mark analysis done by Dr. West. So clearly, um, guys, the forensic evidence given by um, Dr. Michael West uh, resulted in two people being placed in life in prison, one of them on death row. So, guys, what we'll do, we'll open up the panel uh, and um, let's get the discussion going on uh, LaVon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer at this stage of the uh, presentation. Guys, let's rock and roll. Do we have any questions? Uh, Jack 61. Just a comment is, you know, and, and this is all, I, I guess, really so new to everyone. Um, I, and I really haven't had a chance to read this deposition yet, but <laughs> I think I'll, I think others have. So maybe if yes. a little bit of commentary could be given about that. I, I haven't read it. Um, well, I know that Zoe has read it. Zoe, do you have any comments? I don't think it's a good idea I comment anything here. <laughs> and why is that, Zoe? Why wouldn't you like to comment? Because I never thought I'm going to meet a person that's worse than Mr. Kratz. Yes. I mean, yes. he's. it's one thing to be an expert and, you know, make a mistake and apologize for it. He's human, of course, he's not perfect, but his yes. behavior, the way he yes. acts, oh my God. Yes. Um, uh, Susan, do you have any comments? Thank you, Zoe. It's just so sad that a proper investigation was not done because the second little girl should not have been killed. Yeah. Correct, correct. And uh, when we do part two, um, coming up in a few minutes, you'll see you see just exactly how tragic that was. It, it was a shock. It was terrible. And Neverly, do you have a comment? Yeah, regarding Michael West, good morning, everyone, first of all. He's bright and early in <laughs> Southern California. Um, Dr. West, uh, his ego was actually bigger than his physical body, and that was the... Big now one. that's saying something. <laughs> yes, exactly. Boy. Yeah, and he worked in a small town in Mississippi with all his um, credentials and all his education. He was in the Navy, I think, um, before as yes. well. He had and a lot of only, experience. Yes, a lot of experience. He said 18 pages or something like that. Not that he wanted 20, to 28. Horn. 28. 28 pages. There we go. He see Yeah. Me. Yeah, and uh, not only that he did a bite mark analysis. He also testified over the years as a trace metals expert, wound pattern expert, gunshot yes. residue expert, gunshot reconstruction expert, a crime scene investigator, blood spatter <laughs> expert, tool mark expert, fingernail scratch expert, liquid splash pattern expert, and video enhancement expert. Yeah. Wow. Is that all? Is that all? Yeah, I know. I know. Okay. Thank you, like, Which is kind of like, even worse because the the higher he flew, you know, the harder he fell. Yes, correct. If that's an expression. Correct. Yes, it is. Thank, thank you, Neverly. Uh, Jack sixty one, do you have a comment? Uh, yeah, and I made a a comment uh, on uh, Reddit on another, another platform, and talking about uh, with some other people about. West and in this comparison to because we always talk about Kratz and the narcissism that he displayed and still yes. does to this day. Yes. That yes. in reality, and we've talked a little bit about it, but to me, West is worst because what is it? He said he had some effect in over five thousand cases in some way or another. I mean yeah, he's been he's been involved in a lot. Uh, well, okay, for Kratz, we know of, you know, at least two really bad. And there's probably a few others that are minor, but, you know, two really bad. And then that's pretty much it. And then everything else has kind of flowed from that. And we see Correct. his narcissism. Uh, Correct. And the, 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 the sexting scandal. 
this guy West, oh my God, he, he's yes, just yes. like a nonstop. I don't know what to call him. I really don't. Uh, like it's a freight a non- train. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, I was going to say a train wreck. Um, uh, Sammy, do you have From any pink. comments? I was going to think on Aria, but never mind me. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, we have a, have a comment earlier from Pink in the chat that said, Dr. West is a disgrace. He can't even tell what crawfish marks are after throwing the victims in the river. Um, uh, so yeah. it's uh, kind of a dig. But, you know, honestly, I had that same thought when I was watching this. Correct. Um, it didn't make too much sense. And, yeah, he was like a freight train and his word was gospel. Correct. Correct. Uh, I think it goes to show what happens when, uh, you have a, a few people working together, the uh, pathologist, the DA, and Dr. West. They all work together on many, many cases. So as a consequence of that, um, you know, they they take their word as gospel. They're very, very powerful in the community. Uh, it is a, Afri- a la- predominantly large uh, African-American uh, community. There was a lot of racial tension a lot of issues in that particular community, and it was a recipe for uh, for, for disaster. Uh, Susan, do you have a comment? Yeah, uh, Dr. West is the definition of a closed mind. And I think in, yes. within the scientific community, I think there's a, a subset of people that get in that, they, they believe so much in their own research that... Yes. It, they don't do actual scientific work. <laughs> well, well, according to Dr. West, he was the best of the best, right? Uh, he reckons that he was a pioneer uh, in this uh, bite mark analysis, and um, <laughs> he looked up to his hero, uh, Dr. Richard Soveron, uh, who did the bite mark analysis for the 10 Buddy case, and so, um, basically, Dr. West was a law unto himself. Um, Jack61, do you have a comment? Yeah, yeah, and another thing that just occurred, well, it didn't just occur to me, but, you know, in, through all this, uh, you're a scientist, and you, ha- you have been for decades. As science has progressed, you've had to alter and progress or, you know, whatever, except the newer stuff, the newer Correct. things. He, he doesn't do that. He won't accept it. It's just like, uh, no, I'm right. You're wrong. Forget it. Yes. yes. Uh, and uh, correct. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see his attitude a bit later on, which is completely shocking. And uh, Bibi, do you have a comment? Well, <clears throat> the difference there is Silkman's not a narcissist. <laughs> oh, I hope not. No, yeah. I'm definitely not a narcissist. So. Yes. Um, and again, uh, when one compares uh, Ken Kratz with uh, Dr. West, Dr. Michael West, we can spend hours on that. Um, and it's that type of very destructive personality that really got in the way in a lot of these cases that um, he did bite mark analysis. And it had shocking consequences um, for a lot of people. And Neverly, do you have a comment? Just to... Continue on what we said about the scientist being a scientist. I'm not a scientist, but as I understand science, you have to keep an open mind because you never know what you're going to find out. You have to kind of say, yeah, this has been like this so far, but maybe there's another way. And with all his education, it was amazing how close minded he was. And I think it was just his ego that was standing in his way. Yes, yes. Because the guy's not dumb. Yes. He's just like very no. self-righteous. Correct, correct. He uh, he did a lot of roles within the community, ranging from coroner to all sorts of uh, uh, odd jobs. Uh, and he really, every time, if you read the deposition, you, you really must. You'll be shocked. Uh, he did everything for money. Everything revolved around money. Uh, Susan, do you have a comment? Yes, and after the the Bundy case, the bite mark uh, analysis became very popular, and I'm sure he was in very high demand, and that Correct. just fueled his ego Correct. to no end, and yes, there his mind shut down. Yeah, uh, what people don't realize, I think Dr. Uh, Richard Silveron got lucky, per se, because the uh, Ted Bundy gave a perfect 
teeth specimen on the victim. And not only that, um, Ted's teeth were unique in terms of like the shape and the bite. So it was a perfect fit. And you can see uh, in the series that what they did is that they passed around the uh, mold of Ted Bundy's teeth to the jury so they can actually physically handle and examine. And they could clearly see the bite marks that were left on the victim were a perfect match. And you're right, Susan. All of a sudden now, um, the number of cases uh, that the DAs and judges wanted uh, involving bite mark analysis went through the roof. Neverly, do you have a comment? Yeah, I would like to point out the uh, obvious, which is the ignorance and the arrogance of Dr. West when he said in two reports back to back, indeed and without doubt. Correct. The teeth, yeah, Mark. Yeah, who says that? What happened to the without, uh, within um, reasonable yes. scientific certainty? That's what yes. true scientists say because they know there's always another way. Yes, but um, and, yes, he also claimed that bite mark analysis that they actually are more significant and better matched than DNA and yes. fi fingerprints. Yeah, correct. Yes, more important mm. than fingerprints. Yeah, uh, and right. And you see, the thing is, is that with the Ted Bundy case, um, the odontologist became seduced by the bite mark analysis. And as a result of that, there were many more cases that relied on bite mark analysis and by people by Dr. West and other uh, orthodontologists. So, yeah, things really, really took off. Now, remember, we're talking about the 90s. And this really was uh, before DNA came along, before DNA testing came along. So, guys, um, if we don't have any further questions, what I'd like to do is to do part two. Um, Neverly. Do you have a quick Sorry. Comment? Yes. No, no I problems. <laughs> I, again, in this uh, third case of Courtney Smith, yes. Levon Brooks got uh, pointed out, the finger was pointing to Levon Brooks by the five year old. Correct. Five year old in his testimony by, um, what is it, Dr. Bunky? Uncle Bunky. Uncle Bunky. Yeah, Uncle, the, Uncle Bunky. Yeah, I know. Who was also a TV show host. And a correct. deputy. Uh, that's, that's correct. correct. Uncle Bunky. God. <laughs> yes. God. Yes. And well, so that was because he was a television host, right? That's that's correct. He was a kid's that's show correct. television host. Yes. So basically, yeah. he thought he thought that he could solicit um, uh, uh, more sort of like more information from the five year old, the sister, uh, and of course. Uh, if you actually see the show, some of the things that uh, were said um, by the five-year-old were completely off the planet, but the jury didn't get to see that, right? So it's what you leave out that can have devastating consequences, which is well, really, really sad. Bibi. Uncle Bunky was kind of leading her at times too. Yes, yes, and we also know of another famous case in which uh, investigators led their uh, particular person that they were questioning. Right, guys? Right. <laughs> yeah. How much do yeah. they leave out of Brendan's, of all, yeah. out of all his interviews, how much was yeah. left out? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Exactly right. All right, guys. Well, look, what I'll do, I'll oh, continue oh, oh. with... Oh, Dr. Silkman, pick me, pick me. Neverly. Do you have another okay. comment? <laughs> yes, I do. For Levon's case, how yes. sad and inappropriate is that his best friend from childhood, family friend, that guy Bowles, he was his yes. best friend from boss. childhood, boss. He was on jury and he became a foreman. Correct. Isn't that like a conflict of interest right there? However, That's a huge both, conflict of interest. Yes. The district attorney was excited because he thought, you know, Bowles, what's his name, boss, was, he, was boss. white. And he yes. most likely is going to convict him because of the color, you know. This, Correct. Yeah. Correct. But the defense was excited also because they're thinking, oh, he's his best the friend. The so friends. neither one of them, they, ha they had their interest vested in conviction Correct. or release. They didn't see that that's, hey, 
really a conflict of interest. And how Cor sad. Co correct. It was very yeah. sad. And uh, imagine if you had to go uh, part of the jury pool on your own best friend. You know, that, yeah. that, that, that's, well, that's a terrible situation. Bibi. And his friend came to view him as being guilty by the end, too. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Um, basically, uh, the evidence that was put forward, which was the bite mark analysis, uh, and also the testimony of the five-year-old sister, was enough to convince the jury. And uh, Lavon Brooks got life in prison. So, uh, yeah, that that's how devastating it was. So, guys, what we'll do, we'll continue with part two. And then we'll open it up for discussion again. All right, guys. So let's have a look at slide number 19. So remember, um, these guys were already in prison um, for many, many years. And for example, Kennedy Brewer. Now, remember, um, these guys were writing letters to the Innocence Project, right? They were saying that they were innocent. They had committed no crime. Um, could they please have a look at their particular cases? But the sad thing is, guys, is that the Innocence Project uh, only can deal with 1% of cases uh, in a year. So because of lack of manpower, uh, a lack of money, they could only examine a few cases at a time. Anyway, they did examine the Kennedy Brewer case. And forensic evidence was collected at the time and a sexual assault kit uh, was done. What they did, uh, the um, Innocence Project team, they um, gave that material for DNA testing. Now, remember, DNA testing back then was still relatively new. And if you remember the Stephen Avery case, uh, what got him exonerated, same thing, a DNA testing. Well, the results came back, and lo and behold, uh, Kennedy Brewer was excluded as the sperm uh, as the person who had raped that poor little girl, right? But remarkably, despite the fact that the um, sperm did not come from Kennedy Brewer, the um, attorney was very, very reluctant to let him go. And in actual fact, the DA wanted to do a retrial. They wanted to do a brand new trial, despite the fact that, hey, the DNA test had exonerated a Kennedy Brewer as being the rapist of this poor little girl. So if we have a look at slide number 20, well, what the um, uh, Innocence Project team did is that they went about to reconstruct the crime scene, um, which is what any good investigation should do, reconstruct the crime scene, see if you can reproduce it. So they showed that it was very, very easy to snatch a child from the bed, from the window. It was very, very easy to do. But what they did is they got an entomologist, a forensic entomologist, to go down to the riverbed uh, where they found the body of, of the little girl. Uh, and uh, what the gentleman did is he set traps to determine what type of wildlife was present in that river. Lo and behold, they found crawfish. And you can see the picture uh, on the bottom uh, right-hand side. And the thing about the crawfish is that they've got little nippers on them. So what they did, if we have a look at slide number 21, uh, they got uh, a baby pig. I know it's very sad, but they got a baby pig. And they set up a tank and they placed crawfish uh, inside, the baby, uh, inside the tank with the baby pig. Lo and behold... Uh, when they analysed the skin of the pig, they found bite marks from the crawfish. And the bite marks resembled exactly what was on uh, Christine Jackson's body. So could it possibly be that instead of being bitten by uh, a human being, for example, Kennedy Brewer, maybe the bite marks were from the crawfish? So... If we have a look at slide 22, we can summarize here. So, is in essence, um, we have the death, the brutal death of two girls, both three years old. Courtney Smith, um, her death occurred in 1990, uh, and Levon Brooks is serving, was serving life in prison. 
for that uh, brutal murder. And we have Kennedy Brewer, um, who was sentenced to death for the brutal murder of Christine Jackson, 1992, in 1992. Now, no, the amazing thing is that no one put two and two together to see how very similar those crimes actually were. So let's have a look at slide number 23. Now, this actually is quite frightening because remember the original suspect list? Oh, um, one moment, guys. I'll be back in a second. One moment. Uh, Jack, can you continue? Uh, yes. Yes, with, can you continue? With, yes, with a little bit of help. It's on slide, slide number 23. Yep. I can't get it to open. Okay, that's all right. Well, we're looking okay. at Go ahead, Beverly. Okay, slide 23 depicts in the upper left-hand corner 12 suspects. They're all black male, and they were original suspects uh, from the Levon's case. And they had one there with a blood, they took a blood sample, and number seven was Justin Albert Johnson. He was a 35-year-old man. He was already in the pool of the suspects when they convicted Levon. And now when they came to poor Christine Jackson, Justin Pete's sweetheart, uh, Kennedy Brewer, um, again, the DA was so overzealous and he protected, wanted to protect his uh, conviction of Levon that he said, oh, we have a copycat. Instead of focusing on further investigation and to maybe see what's going on, we have the same MO of the murder when Levon was sitting in prison. So how could that be? So instead of saying, well, let's look into that case, he said it's a copycat. Didn't he, didn't uh, this, this guy also had another, some other arrests and problems? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Nearby. Yes. Okay. Yes. And uh, Kennedy Brewer, he said himself, look at that window. It's broken. Maybe somebody came from outside and picked up the little girl. And later on, we found out that that's exactly how it happened that uh, this uh, suspect, Justin Albert Johnson, he said it, you know, when they asked him, how did you do it? He said, I went from outside through the broken window and I picked up the girl. He was so all the answers up. were he there, was, yes. He was, he was all cracked out, drugged out. Yes, and he was a humongous man. So for him to go on the outside window and go through it, it was um, obviously doable. Yeah. So it's just very, very disturbing how... Um, justice again was mishandled for these two people. Yeah, and, and as Susan said earlier, yes, as a Susan, Susan, can you repeat what you said earlier? If they did a proper investigation, Christine Jackson probably wouldn't have died. Right, she would be alive today. Uh, yes. More than likely, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Incredibly and sad. Then, <clears throat> Justin Johnson also uh, said that he never bit her. Yes. And he was baffled about Let me the tell trial. you, those, those, all that bite marks and the crawfish comparison, that's exactly what that looks like to me, is crawfish bites. There's no it bottom does not teeth. look like no human. Yeah, that does not look like human bite marks. Well, stupid Dr. West was rolling those dental imprints or molds. He was rolling them on the skin to make him fit, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's why Dr. Suveron was like appalled when he saw that. He I saw that, that on film. I thought, what a jackass. You know? At one point, I thought it even looked like he had put the dental imprint upside down against it. And was like basically comparing the left side to the right side of the bite mark when he was rolling it around there. Plus, you can really inflict um, injury to the skin the way he was doing. And mind you, he was using only the upper teeth. Exactly. And that's what Dr. Suveran said. He goes, what the hell is he doing? Yeah. You bite yeah. someone with just your yeah. upper teeth. And how could that yeah. judge not allow the jury to see 
that tape. And this I Justin know. Johnson guy, he thought somebody had came along after him and bit her. Yep. Yeah. And the DA was so adamant about his conviction, he did not want to look oh, at any other suspects. Yeah, they God. offered Kennedy a plea deal, and he refused. He goes, I didn't yep. do it. Yep. So typical well, in wrongful convictions. Of course, DA Dr. Westby just... and I, oh, sorry. Dr. Westby and a narcissist, he comes up very knowledgeable, you know, very convincing. Well, Com the, or confident, he, yeah. Yeah, he knows the right yes. saying how to say them to convince a jury. But to me, he's he's nothing more than a scammer. That's he's hot dressed, air. Yeah, yeah, he's dressed it up so well and so convincingly. And uh, it's almost like he, I know he doesn't probably, but it's almost like he sold himself on this. But he's made a living out of this. He's made a life out of it. Oh, yeah. When you see his report, when it says, you know, that arrogant statement, indeed and without doubt, uh, that's like first sentence, the second sentence the paragraph is, I send you my bill. Oh, well, yeah. there you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Maybe how we should move on to the next slide. How much, just before you go to that, how much was he getting per slide? Like, or maybe per, per case, like 750 bucks or so? Yeah, 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 yeah. 750 bucks. Yeah. Yeah. And he handled like three thousand. Oh yeah. my God! You've got Put to get somebody kidding. away for life, or or uh, give him the death penalty. <laughs> well, I I really hope that he was better at some of his other areas of expertise than he was at the bite mark thing. Guys, I'm back. And <laughs> in the deposition, he was. Hey, hey Silkman, in the deposition, hey. um, this. West, oh, he's not even a fucking doctor. Um, <laughs> um, he was he was complaining that he's he's not getting paid for being there. He was arguing with the lawyer that he wasn't getting yes, paid was. for being there and doing the deposition. He actually swore at the lawyer too. Oh yeah, he was a and white ass, a narcissist. Yes. Um, and a sociopath. So, so oh, you know, no, no, no. I, I meant so, so whatever path. Oh, him. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, what slide did we get up to? We didn't. Are we still? Are we still on slide twenty-three? Yeah, we're no, we almost just there. It, basically, yeah. we. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. But essentially, uh, the tragedy is if you have a look on the original uh, list. Uh, the 12 suspects, there's Justin Albert Johnson. Now, remember what Dr. West did. He did the dental impressions of all 12 um, suspects. And Dr. West cleared Justin Albert Johnson of putting the bite marks uh, on uh, Christine Jackson, which is pretty remarkable. So Justin Albert Johnson was actually on the suspect list. So, guys, if we go back to uh, slide 24, what the um, uh, Innocence Project did was they sent off a lot of available forensic evidence to the DNA lab for testing. So, and this includes uh, material uh, from some of the suspects, and including Johnson was one of them. Uh, so there was forensic material to be tested uh, for DNA. So, guys, if we have a look at slide 25, lo and behold, Johnson actually confessed to both crimes. That was the uh, rape and murder of both girls, of both Courtney Smith and Christine Jackson. And, of course, the DNA came back as a hit um, to Johnson. And when they questioned him, um, he told them exactly what he did, uh, how he uh, snatched the little girls from their homes. And what is interesting is this. They asked him, they asked Johnson, oh, did you bite them? As in the two little girls. And he said, no, of course. No, 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 I didn't. Now, this is remarkable because remember, Dr. Um, Michael West, 
said that um, both Lavon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer absolutely bit their victims, the two little girls. And here we have the person who had confessed to both of the crimes. They proved it by DNA as well. And he said, no, he didn't bite any of the little girls. So let's have a look at slide number 26. Well, all of a sudden now, uh, a lot of the uh, uh, evidence that uh, Dr. West gave in a lot of the trials, that was starting to be disputed, criticised. Uh, a lot of people were being very concerned was if Dr. West was so sure, uh, how did he possibly get these two cases wrong? That's both the Lavon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer cases. How could he be so wrong? Um, and look, it's amazing. If you have a look at the episodes, and Zoe will even agree, he was very, very flippant. Um, he, was, he was very, very terrible. And he kept on insisting, despite the DNA result, he kept on saying, nope, those guys, they definitely bit the girl, uh, their victim. And then he started to recant. He goes, oh, did I say he killed her? So the DA came up with these ridiculous situations uh, whereby, oh, yeah, so the the uh, Kennedy Brewer and Levon Brooks, uh, they bit their victim and they allowed uh, Johnson to rape the little girls. And so it just became worse and worse and worse. So if we have a look at slide number 27, well, you can see that um, in 2008, Levon Brooks had already been in prison for 18 years. Kennedy Brewer had been in prison for 15 years. And remember, Kennedy Brewer was facing um, the death penalty on, on the conviction. And so when the court cases were done, if we have a look at slide number 28, we can see mercifully that uh, both um, Levon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer were completely exonerated for any crimes. And so their names were cleared. And it's really, really scary that had the Innocence Project come in um, and defended them, uh, they would have still been in prison and uh, Kennedy Brewer may have also been killed. And you can have a look at the at the reaction of the DA, he wasn't too impressed at all. All right, guys, so why don't we just stop it here and we can just open it up to the panel. What do you think, guys? Um, what do you think of Dr. West and uh, bite mark analysis, guys? A Jack 61. Garbage. Only in yeah. really specialized cases i think could you absolutely say yeah okay we, we have a we have a match but yes by and large yes. garbage yes um a bb do you have a comment hasn't it uh, kind of been ruled as like a junk science uh yes it has now it has although although there are a lot of states in america that still will allow uh, bite mark analysis, which is truly remarkable. But um, um, I think a scientific paper came out in 2009 that was very hypercritical of all forensic analysis. Uh, and it's remarkable that um, the bite mark analysis put these people in prison and DNA helped to exonerate them, which is remarkable because you can't solely rely on bite mark analysis. You need other corroborating forms of evidence. Uh, Neverly, do you have a comment? Yes, I do, but I forgot about what I wanted to say. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Zoe, Zoe, do you have a comment? No, I don't think so. He wants to talk. Uh, Susan, do you have a comment? Yeah, on slide 28, uh, bottom left, the I believe he's the DA. The DA? All, yes, he all is. Good. All good. All good. Afterwards, that the system failed, but overall, it actually worked because nobody died. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember, I remember this, Susan. I was thinking to myself, 
Well, what about all those years those guys' lives were destroyed and they languished? And one guy on death row for years. Correct. This guy Kennedy looking Brewer. at death. What about the second um, little girl? Yeah. God. Oh, yeah. Yep. Correct. 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 She died for be, no reason. Be, yes. Correct. Correct. Had had um had the DNA been available, um and had proper forensic analysis been done in the Lavon Brooks case, uh, Christine Jackson likely would have been still alive, uh, and that's that's just terrible when you when one thinks about it. A uh, BB, do you have a comment? Most Khan made an interesting statement. He said that if Zoe happens to kill Dr. West, can she <laughs> say that uh, foul play made her to it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we probably have to get a lawyer. Zoe, do you have a comment? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't talk uh, when you called me. I'm sorry. I, I, That's wanted, okay. I wanted to say, you know, in the Brewer case, it was, he was, um, the DNA was done in 2001. And then the yes. prosecutor intended to retry Brewer, and so so, so he was still in prison for five five more years, and then he was released on bail in two thousand and seven, and then in two thousand and eight he was exonerated. So he sat there for another correct six uh, six seven years for nothing. That is correct. That's correct. And we all know, of course, what happened to Stephen Avery. Precisely the same thing happened to him as well. Yeah. And remember when yeah. Cherie Cohen did the analysis on the pubic hairs, uh, she sat on that result and it took her a year to do the result. Okay. And we're talking about an experiment that normally will take about maybe four hours. Um, she took a year. And so we can see the analogy to what happened to Stephen, to what happened to both Levon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer. And thank God the judge had sense uh, and realized and looked at all the forensic evidence uh, and exonerated both of them. Uh, Jack61, do you have a comment? Wasn't there a case, and maybe I'm thinking of it wrong, that the Mississippi Supreme Court still upholds or still is following uh, Dr. West's testimony that he gave. I can't uh, the case yes. yes, yes, yes. They, they, they were. They're not like saying. Uh, they're not like uh, all the others are saying. No, this is junk. This is garbage. We're throwing it out. They're still saying, "Yeah, okay, we're going to accept what his word." I can't remember the case. Um, I think Zoe might know the case, but there's actually quite a lot of cases that Dr. West. Was involved in that they're it's, now it's looking Eddie at the Howard case. Uh, yes, 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 that's yes. correct. Yes. With the rape of the uh, eighty-six-year-old lady. Yes, eighty-two. Yeah, that's correct. A uh, eighty-two. Yes. Okay, correct. So, the, so now what the Innocence Project is doing is looking at all the uh, bite mark analysis cases, um, and quite a few have been exonerated uh, based on DNA. Uh, Neverly, do you have a comment? I wanted to praise the Innocence Project, their existence and um, their founders, Dr. Peter Newfield and Barry Schack, for um, yes. being so advanced in their thinking and in using their science, right, the DNA. Because Correct. if it wasn't for that, um, there was a rape kit for Kennedy Brewer that was just sitting there. And uh, once the innocent correct. project, yes, that's took correct. over the case, they um, examined the rape kit and matched it against Kennedy's uh, DNA, and it was it was negative. It excluded. Correct, him. correct. What an, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I was going to say, Neverly. Unfortunately for Levon Brooks, the sex um, kit, rape kit, it became um, contaminated. contaminated. They couldn't use it. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. But then, since they got Johnson, who um, uh, confessed to both crimes, plus his DNA was the source of the semen, they had to let him go. And so both of them were released, I think, at the same time. They were both exonerated at the same trial, which was awesome. Awesome. Okay, guys, do we have any further comments? All right. So, guys, what I'd like to do now is to finish off with our third case. Um, 
if you thought uh, Lavon Brooks and Kennedy Brew was bad, uh, this one actually is quite sad and it, in a way worse. So let's have a look at slide 29. We don't have too many slides to go, guys. Now, this is the story of Keith Harwood. Um, and Keith had spent 33 years in prison, all based on Dr. Levine, who's another um, odontologist, on Dr. Levine's bite mark analysis. So this guy actually sat in prison for 33 years. Uh, and this horrendous crime took place on September the 14th, 1982, in Newport News in Virginia. So let's have a look at slide number 30. And so what had happened um, at this person's house, at the Perron household, um, uh, someone came into the house uh, and murdered her, Teresa's husband. And Teresa Perron was um, repeatedly raped um, right next to the bed where her dead husband was. Uh, and it was a very, very vicious attack. And what the perpetrator did, and you can see on the right-hand side, was that he put teeth marks uh, all over her body. And so, um, of course, when, if we have a look at slide number 31, um, Teresa was able to give a, a sort of a vague description of uh, her attacker, and basically that he was a young man uh, and he wore a sailor outfit. Well, it just so happens that Keith Harwood was also a sailor, uh, and uh, he had this romantic relationship with this lady here, um, and apparently they got into a domestic fight, and lo and behold, what Keith Harwood did was he bit this lady, I think, on the shoulder. So if we have a look at slide number 32. So um, when the uh, complaint was made, uh, they did a dentition, um, a dental imprint of uh, Harwood's teeth. And um, Keith Harwood, he was responsible for the bite mark on that lady. And so uh, with the testimony of um, Levine, um, they basically put the proposition that um, he was the one that attacked Teresa and murdered her husband um, in the house. And so what happened was Harwood um, basically got life in prison for the murder and also sexual assault of Teresa. And this was all done on bite mark evidence because Teresa could not identify um, Keith, right? She actually, when, um, when Harwood was taken to court uh, with what he did to his girlfriend, his current girlfriend at that time, they also brought in Teresa to listen. And she goes, no, that's not him. I don't recognize that voice at all. But it didn't matter because, now wait for it, six dentists had a look at the teeth impression of Keith Harwood and said, yep, those teeth are the ones that bit Teresa. So through bite mark analysis, Harwood, Keith Harwood got life in prison for murder and also for rape. Now, because if we have a look at slide 33, because um, DNA evidence was available and the Innocent Project uh, looked at Keith's case, all of a sudden when they did the DNA analysis, this is like many, many years later, um, it, it discovered that, no, he wasn't the rapist at all. And because they've got the CODA system, lo and behold, it hit on another sailor from the same ship, right? So this guy, Keith, had spent 33 years in prison for something he never did. But through the DNA analysis, they're able to work out who that DNA actually belonged to. So if we have a look at slide number 34, it actually came up to Jerry Crotty, and he was the one that was responsible for the murder and the vicious rape. And so if we have a look uh, at the right-hand side of slide 34, you can see that, and I'll quote, Dr. West's expert testimony 
has contributed to six known wrongful convictions and indictments. I think what Jack 61 said is correct. There are other cases that are now being looked at. So remember, Dr. West wasn't the only ontologist. There were many others as well. So they're all going back and looking at all the cases. I think, I can't remember the number. I don't know, Zoe, if you remember the number, but it's something like 28 people have been exonerated uh, because of the um, the bite mark analysis and 24. DNA has set them free. How many altogether? 20, 24, well, probably 20. more, but um, one document said 24. Right. Okay. But it's a high number. So these guys have been predominantly sitting in prison for long periods of time, including Keith, who sat in prison for 33 years for something he never did. And so, guys, let's end it with slide 35 before we open up the discussion. We can have a quick discussion. Um, it's just totally amazing if you have a look at Dr. West. And uh, he was basically saying, oh, look, you know, we're not perfect. We can make mistakes. Uh, if new evidence comes along, uh, and I'll quote, we can open the door and let him out. Uh, obviously referring to people who have been sitting in prison for like 33 years. That's fine. We can open the door. We can let them out. No problems at all. And uh, as Susan said, the DA who um, tried a lot of these cases goes, ah, oh, yeah, you know, no problems. Nobody died. <laughs> and I was just left absolutely speechless. Um, and so, guys, this concludes our podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. We'll open it up uh, to the panel for questions. But um, if you like um, the podcast, uh, let us know. If you like us to continue uh, analysing the other cases uh, in the innocent files, they're different to bike mark analysis. But I think Neverly said they actually get worse and worse. Is that true, Neverly? The cases get worse. Oh, it goes from bad to worse. For uh -oh. me personally, yes. Each case is just really appalling and disturbing. But the last yes. two episodes, eight and nine, to those two cases, they're just like unfathomable. Oh, no. Are you <laughs> saying we will find someone that's even worse than West? <laughs> um, the cases are just so disturbing. What was done and what hasn't been done. It's just... Oh, I don't want to give any spoilers. Okay. Okay. So just the cases, okay. not the people. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So what we'll do now, um, thank you very much for listening, but what we'll do now, we'll open it up uh, to the panel. Guys, uh, Jack61, do you have any comments? Just um, how much Dr. West loathes the Innocence Project. Did anyone get that besides me? <laughs> he absolutely oh, um, hates he hates those people with a passion. Uh, cor correct. He refused to shake um, uh, one of the um, one of the guy's hands. I think it was Peter Newfield. Yeah. And uh, he basically told him to f off. He, he hates oh, the he innocent was project. Disgusting. He was disgusting the way he portrays himself. What he did to Peter Newfield exactly. He cannot stand him. He cannot yes. absolutely stand stand him. Correct. And why? Correct. Because he disagrees with him and he debunks his um, malpractice. Basically, what he's doing is mal malpractice. Correct. He went out to he went out to smoke, and Doctor Newfield came out, and uh, yeah, and that whole scene he was talking about. I wasn't going to shake that son of a bitch's hand or whatever he said. Yes, I yes. can't remember the exact yeah. passage, but oh my god! And the it reminds me of how how much Kratz hates all of yes. us, the truthers. Yes, he, it's the so, same. It is the same. It's so arrogant. Correct. Uh, I I see it very much as a very destructive personality, uh, and they uh, will never uh, admit to that they were wrong. Uh, and they're still saying he. If you ask Doctor West, he will still say that Levon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer uh, bit that bit the victims. Right? They may have not raped the victims, they may not have killed the victims, but they definitely bit them. Uh, and That's when his we, ego. 
Correct, correct. He won't let it go, guys. Abibi, do you have a comment? How about Dr. West's little acronym of whore? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, that? Zoe, do you have uh, what it stands for? Whore? Well, I thought whore is something connected to women, but now I, I, I found out it's something else too. I don't know. Yes. I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, it's a degrading and disrespectful acronym named the Dr. West um, put together for actually his idol. Correct. And who is his idol, Dr. Tilton? Uh, Dr. Richard Silveron. Um, mm -hmm. And during his um, uh, trial, his deposition, uh, he named all his fellow um, uh, orthodontists, you know, or orondologists, and he called them all idiots, all of them. And he has no respect for Dr. Soveron. Um, and remember, Dr. Soveron, he was one of the big pioneers in the Ted Bundy case with bite mark analysis. And, of course, in one of the trials, I think it was the Kennedy Brewer trial, um, the defense actually hired uh, Dr. Richard Soveron to um, counteract what Dr. West found. And uh, it's interesting that Dr. Soveron said that uh, Dr. West was 110% in error. So it's not very good when you have your own idol debunking what your own work, which is incredible. Because we saw, guys, we saw the videos that Dr. West did. He had to rotate. Uh, the teeth uh, at impossible angles. And don't forget, there are no marks from the lower jaw. So uh, Dr. Sovereign said, or oh, what do they do? They put the leg in their mouth. Um, so it was really, really bizarre. Zoe, do you have a comment? I found what poor means. Yes. It's witness having other reasonable explanations. <laughs> yes. Jesus. <laughs> Correct. Yep. It's it's a it's a real concern. Susan, do you have a comment? Yeah, I find it interesting when Dr. West tried to weasel his way out and said, Well, I never said that that it uh he killed her because Correct. of the right mark. And, and then Kratz saying, Well, I never said the bullet went through her head. I mean Correct. it's just so similar. <laughs> Correct. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. We could almost do another podcast uh, just tracking the similarities between Dr. West uh, and also Ken Kratz. It's actually quite frightening um, how their personalities and egos um, played a, a big role in getting convictions. Um, because a lot of the jurors said, well, you know, uh, Dr. West, Dr. Uh, and um, all good, they were very convincing, they were very forthright. Whereas uh, when Dr. Sovereign uh, presented evidence, uh, he was very flippant. Uh, he wasn't very believable. And you know, that's what got the jury, got the jurors. And so the, he, he, these two poor guys, uh, Levon and Kennedy and Kennedy Brewer, they got convicted basically on the bite mark analysis, which is frightening. Um, Neverly, do you have a comment? Yeah, I think that with Dr. West being from the small um, area in Mississippi, with as I said earlier, and that also stands with all his education and expertise and how popular and rich he became from all of this. You know, he said it yes. is also that uh, all my talents and skills are directed from God. Correct. Does that Correct. sound familiar <laughs> yes, to somebody we know? Yeah, yeah, Pam of God said the same thing. So yeah. the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, also, yeah. There's he a also silver said, line. Uh, Susan. Susan. Same breath. He also said, look out for anybody that uh says God has their back or something like that. Correct. I remember. Right. I know exactly what you're calling, saying. So yeah. He was calling yes. himself crazy. Yes. Correct. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, yeah, look, guys, if you have the time, I thoroughly recommend that you have a look at his deposition. I think we've got it in foul play. Is that correct, Zoe? 
we've got a I think we, we should do. put a link we do and yeah, we do. Uh, I also have the link here prepared for them Co correct uh, and the reason why I say that is because I have a feeling we're going to see a similar deposition if Kathleen Zona puts Ken Kratz on the stand. We're going to get a similar no. type of uh, responses from Ken Kratz. And it's remarkable how many times Zoe did Dr. West say, I don't know, I can't remember. Hey, I did 5,000 cases, I can't remember. So he basically was not able to answer for what the investigator was asking him. Well, uh, I don't Susan. think. Oh, sorry, 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 I'm sorry. sorry. I, I no, don't. Sorry. I don't think he 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 didn't know how to answer. I think he didn't want to he answer. Did, he it was wanna. it was funny when when he was asked if he keeps um, records um, at home, and he said, "Oh, oh yes. yeah, in my drawer." And my, the lawyer dresser, was like, "In, my in your drawer, drawer? Yeah, I keep records um, in my drawer sometimes." And then the lawyer asks, okay, what kind of um, records? And he says, uh, Beatles. <laughs> and Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. Yeah. Now, and, and don't forget, and don't, don't forget, guys, this is a man that put oh, so many people in prison and a lot of them for life in prison, and he's being flippant uh, to an investigator. Uh, and he basically what happened is that he, Dr. West got caught out. Um, with junk science, uh, and he didn't like it, didn't appreciate it. Uh, Susan, do you have a comment? Yeah, in the during the deposition, when he kept uh, saying he couldn't remember, he said, "You seen one dead girl with a bite mark? You seen them all?" I yes, <laughs> yes, I have never seen. Oh yes, yes. Well, the equivalent is when Ken Kratz said to the <laughs> said about a coroner, oh. You don't need a coroner. They just come in and kick the body. Complete disrespect. I it takes a special person um, of such caliber to say something like that on the record and for the record. Correct. Just Correct. Disgusting. But not all but, is bad news. We also have the American Board of Forensic Od Odontology, the ABFO, and the oh, former yes. president, Dr. Freeman, was talking about that. And he says how... Um, the forensic odontology is accepted worldwide, but it's under scrutiny in Correct. the United States Correct. in modern day. And what I really like to hear about um, from him is that they did a study. They sent out uh, 100 cases to all these experts. Oh, yes. Right? Yes. And asked them particular questions. They wanted to see what kind of answers they're going to come up with. They wanted to see if um, this odontolo forensic odontologist is still uh, standing and reliable. So what happened that uh, in those uh, 100 cases, not one case was 100% conclusive by experts. Correct. And They all came actually... with like wishy-washy answers. Correct. Uh, in actual fact, it was 33%, 33%, 33%, yes, yes no, I don't know. Maybe, <laughs> so yeah. instead of getting 100% yeah. agreement, as in this is a human bite mark, right? This is a human bite mark, right? 66% um, said, I don't know or no. And only 33% said yes, which meant that not even experts were in agreement. Uh, and that's pretty bad. Asami, do you have a comment? That basically says that it is pretty much not a good science to be using. It's junk. It's random. Yeah. It's random And junk. as the president of this uh, association, he said it is my duty to correct the mistake if one was made, which only a sane, you know, liable and um, reputable scientist could say. And after all that experiment, he said, you know what? I'm not going to ever testify for the state and any longer correct correct because in it's fact, not reliable he, he, in fact what's ironical is that dr west said now nah, i wouldn't use it i wouldn't use it anymore in the deposition he realized um the damage that it caused a uh, jack 61 do you have a comment uh well actually a comment and a couple of questions first uh neverly you didn't mean special in a good way did you I'm going to say that's no. <laughs> <laughs> no number two, no. <laughs> number two, 
Dr. West was stripped of his license when in the, I don't know, I can't remember. Does anyone know that for sure, what the date was? I don't, was know, I don't know the date, but yeah, he was booted out. He was booted out of several uh, associations. Including and his, they, his, de- his dental license was stripped and yes. all that. Yes, and they, uh, they asked him what was the highlight of his career, and he said, when I resigned. <laughs> 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 that was the highlight of his career. Oh you can't fire me. I quit. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. And, I, Correct. and I'm still right. And you guys are wrong. And I know what you're still wrong, even though I know that I've made a mistake. I'll never admit it. That's what Correct. I see in Green Press. Have another Correct. beer, Dr. West. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, Zoe, do you have a comment? Yeah, there was something funny, too, they did with Mr. West. Um yeah, oh, there was yes. there was a lawyer and he had he had an investigator and they sent this investigator sent um Dr. West um um some bite marks and um his own not teeth but teeth marks or what or whatever it is this impression thank you impression, impression. of his own teeth and yes. And the check for seven hundred and fifty dollars. Of course, you have to pay the person, of right? Um, of course. So, a few months later, uh, the results came in, and of course, Mr. West said that um, this this investigator is the source of the bite marks on on those photos. <laughs> so oh they God. caught him. They caught him lying and being wrong. Just you know, caught in the act, actually. Yes, 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 correct, correct. It was a setup. They set him up. Yeah. They set him up. They set him up. So um, eventually, uh, they booted out that district attorney, all good, and they got a new guy, new, um, yes. not district, but uh, GA, which was caught calm, something like that, who was advocating for wrongful conviction investigations. He said that they have a moral and ethical obligation to go back and look into the cases and reevaluate, which, again, a sound mind uh, can say that, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. It, it's interesting, um, Neville, how Dr. West said, oh, they're trying to erase me from history. Yes. that's right? That was his concern, just like Ken Kraft. With my twenty-five year reputation. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, and that's the sad thing because both Dr. West and Ken Kratz thought that they were superstars. And you see, it's interesting how uh, in the um, documentary they actually mentioned um, rock star. That all of a sudden they became very, very popular and that the DAs and attorneys wanted to have bite mark analysis and all of a sudden they became very popular. And Dr. West was a jack of all trades. He did everything. So you can imagine mm-hmm. how Dr. West felt when all of a sudden people called him a quack, right? It would mm-hmm. have been devastating for him, but he won't give in. He won't give in. He doesn't like the it's Innocence the Project. Man. Yep. He yeah. goes, I'm putting people in prison. And the Innocent Project are putting people out. And he goes, I've only put in murderers, rapists, uh, and uh, ones that do vicious assaults, and the Innocent Project is putting them back out on the street so they can continue their crimes. That's the way the guy thinks. That's the way the guy thinks. Uh, Sammy, do you have a comment? Well, it's just a personal opinion, but in my opinion, these experts should be focusing on whatever it is that they've been given to analyze and nothing more, nothing less. Correct. And if they would be doing their damn jobs right, nobody would have to go behind them and do the work again, only to find they were wrong. Yes. They need to just be doing their professional job the way it's supposed to be done and and not attached to the outcome only their expert opinion that yes correct it's it, it really as you said sammy it's meant to be an opinion but um dr west was much more forthright he was saying this is a hundred percent certainty 
and he still to this day says that uh, Levon Brooks and Kennedy Brewer bit their victims. He still won't let it go. Uh, Jack 61. Well, this is where, you know, uh, someone like that, uh, he's really stepping into a like a prosecutor role, and he's not a prosecutor at all. No. He shouldn't say that. He, Sammy's right. He should never have offered that opinion. He could have said Correct. it. He could, he could have said it. What he said uh, in, in other words, but not with certainty. What? Correct. 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 And, and uh, you know the the, the, the I'm sorry, sorry the, the the bias that he attached uh, came comes into those words as well. But in some ways, this almost goes back to double blind testing that we've talked about before. Yes. With, yes. You know, with these these crime labs where the analyst or the expert has really no idea who this is. They they give they're given a number, and that's all they that's all they know. That's all they should freaking know. Period. Correct. Exactly right. It should always be double blind testing. And what the I mean the concern is is that Dr. West, um, and I think it was Dr. Haynes, and also the DA, they all worked as a team. They worked on many cases together. And, you know, a lot of them were in Mississippi. And uh, in Mississippi, there was a big racial problem, a uh, big racial divide. Uh, and so you now got the Innocence Project who now have to spend all this money cleaning up cases that were done, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and there are people rotting in prison. So the system is broken because the Innocence Project can only look at 1% of cases, right? You saw all the letters. Right, they could only look at a certain number of cases at any one particular time. Bibi, do you have a comment? The system is beyond broken. Yes, it's terrible, and uh, especially here in the states. I hear other people in other countries saying the stuff that flies here would never fly in their country. Um, I, yes. I don't even know how we could even go about fixing it. For God's sake. Um, well, if you. Uh, if you have a look at the series, and I'm sure you guys have, uh, they were talking about certain prisons, and they were all African Americans. All of well, them. Yeah, there's, the there's population in those here. prisons yeah. was phenomenally high. Yes, we have a, a big uh, problem with uh, the incarceration rates of. Yes. Yes. African Americans. Yeah, it's, people, it's, yes. very, it's, it's very terrible. disturbing. It, it well. is. Thank you, Bibi. Uh, Susan, do you have a comment? Uh, <clears throat> we can't forget all the actual perpetrators that are left out on the street by, by this behavior. Correct. Correct. Uh, and the scary thing is, Susan, is that hadn't the Innocence Project come along and looked at the DNA forensic evidence, uh, those killers? Well, the interesting thing is this, right? A lot of those guys who've committed these crimes um, have committed other crimes, right? Murdered other people, raped other people, and eventually they got caught. So when they do CODIS uh, hits, a lot of these guys are in prison already. So uh, it, it's a pity that a lot of this forensic evidence couldn't have been done earlier because it could have stopped a lot of crimes from taking place, which is an absolute tragedy. All right, guys. Um, any other final comments? I think we've covered uh, the first three cases really, really well. Did you guys enjoy the podcast? Did you enjoy the analysis? Uh, Jack61. Absolutely. Great job. And I will say, I mean, I've only watched the series one time, but Neverly's right. There are some cases coming up. I, I just, I, I still just, I, I'm in disbelief, especially at the prosecutors and how they, I don't know how they do it. I really don't. Yes. And say that they're, yes. you know, and relating, leaving the, the, this human part. And I understand about law and order. I get it. But come on. Yes, yes. Do the right thing. But yeah, we got some, there's some great um, and really sad cases coming up that I think oh, people will, will, will enjoy. <laughs> All right. Who, who would like to do the next podcast? This is doing my head in. Who would like who to would do like the to next do one? one? 
Well, I think you're doing such a great job. I'm I'm going to say you, but now we oh, couldn't no, possibly no. fill your shoes. No way, no how. <laughs> oh, no. That's, that's that's my. You're vote. stuck with it. Oh, you're no. stuck with it. Yeah. Well. Well, well tell Neville you what, I, picked the ball up pretty good when you stepped away just now. So. Yes, 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 and that that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank I mean, you. Um, it's incredible. I mean, I've never heard of these cases before. I've never heard of Doctor West before, but it didn't take me too long after speaking with Zoe um, to realize uh, he's just the Ken Ken Kratz clone, um, and. You know, when you do when you do junk forensic science, uh, you can get people put in prison for a very long period of time. And we've seen that, guys. We saw that with what Sharika Hain did uh, in 1985 with the junk hair analysis um, that got him put in prison the first time. So, yeah, you've got to do things right. That, that was after uh, Jack 61. Yeah, you was able to speak to Zoe after she calmed down and we cl- we talked her off the ledge. Oh my God! <laughs> yes, <laughs> bless her. Yeah, I don't blame her though. This guy, he's infuriating. It, it, it just reminds me in a lot of ways of what a lot of people went through, you know, four plus yes. years ago when making a murder aired. Correct, correct. Uh, Zoe, do you have a comment? No, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. Okay. BB, do you have a comment? Yes. Kim Best pointed out that he also said when he puts them in prison, all of the murders and rapes stop. Correct. Correct. And with that, comment? I am giving him the Ass Clown Award. <laughs> oh, no. <Yeah. laughs> oh, dear. All right, guys. Uh, I am conscious of the time. Uh, do we have any final comments? I'd never I have, have a comment. Yes, I do. In the Keith Howard case, you know, the poor guy who was um, sentenced to life in prison and spent 33 years in, in prison. 33. They, 33. 33. Uh-huh. They uh, employed a strategic litigation unit. And one of the attorneys was appalled by the junk science. Ooh, and that, he said that, that sounded like a piano. Mm-hmm. He said just uh, because they're expert witness doesn't mean that they're right. Now, let's relate that to the Avery case. We had yes. all these experts with us, and were they right? Well, Kathleen Zellner now debunked most of those experts, what they yes. said, right? And one Correct. more thing, and then I'm going to actually jump in the shower and go to work, which is that uh, Mr. Howard, after three, 33 years spent on life, in life yes. uh, sentence, that he still had the courage and passion to start oh, yes. fighting against the against the junk forensic science, Correct. and that he actually Correct. went really far. Yes, he was honored that. for his advocacy. Yeah, and Virginia yes. Senate passed his um, proposal. However, we know that it failed in the office. Correct. Right. Right. Correct. But still, Correct. good for him. Yes, uh, I'm. I'm just amazed, and of course, we mustn't forget that um, Levon Brooks passed away from cancer so he only had 10 years to live um so you know he had 10 years of freedom but you could imagine all the psychological damage done to these guys that were just basically left out on their uh you know just to fend off their own but because they have very strong family community uh they were able to you know overcome their their issues and problems um and yeah you're right i mean Keith Harwood, 33 years in a prison cell for something he never did. <laughs> and that's pretty scary. But, guys, I'd like to finish with this. And this blew my mind. This blew my mind. And that is they uh, spoke to Dr. Richard Soveron with one of the cases that he tried, right? And he looked at the information again, right? And he goes, Jeepers, I hope they got more than just the bite evidence, right? And so Dr. Savaron looked at it again and he said, nah, I can't, I can't, I can't connect the, the teeth to the guy. I uh, forgot the name of the guy, but he was in prison for 35 years. 35 years. 
and he got exonerated. So uh, it's very, very scary, guys. But remember, there are thousands of people sitting in prison um, who are innocent. So it, it's much bigger than the Steve Avery, Brendan Dassey cases. Um, there are so many people in the same position. It's quite scary. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. And thank you, listeners, for coming on board. Uh, I know it's very early in the morning, guys. But uh, if you've liked what we've done, uh, give us a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, if you've enjoyed the podcast, we'll continue doing the series um, uh, at Analyzing the Innocent Files because one can see the direct parallels to the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey cases. And uh, yeah, look, thank you guys uh, for listening. And thank you, panel, for your uh, excellent uh, questions and responses. That's absolutely awesome. Thank you very much, guys. This has been a Foul Play production.